Today is the sixth day of the month of Cheshvan. We are in the middle of chapter 9 discussing the mitzvah and all the rules of tzitzis and atalis. Today we'll be doing paragraphs 5 through 9. Paragraph 5. The way that you tie your tzitzis is you take four long strings. Three of them will be equal length. The fourth one will be extra long. That fourth one is, gonna, is called the shamish. That is going to be used to wrap the wraps around the other strings. This is a very visual thing, so I'm going to try sharing a picture, a close-up of tied, a tied to the string, so you can see where all the knots are, the wraps are, etc. So you take these four strings, you slip them through the hole, and then you fold them over. So now you end up with eight strings. Again, seven of those strings will be the same length. One of those strings will be extra long. At that point, you tie what we call a double knot, two knots, right up to the garment. And then you take that longer string, that shamus, and you wrap it around the rest of the strings to do, you do seven wraps. After those seven wraps, you tie an, again a double knot, and then you do eight wraps with this longer string. Then another set of double knots, and then you do 11 wraps, another set of double knots, then you do 13 wraps, and then another set of double knots. It's beyond the scope of our discussion, but there's a lot of Kabbalistic meaning and symbolism that go into the numbers of the wraps, the numbers of the knots. This was the, this is the way that the Arizal said to do it. So if it's if the numbers are off or the knots aren't tied properly, it's still hal- halachically kosher. But for Kabbalistic reasons, this is the best. This is the appropriate way to do it. Something to note that if you have techilas, the blue strings on your tzitzis, then the tying is different, so speak to a rabbi to figure out how they should be tied if you're using blue strings. Paragraph 6 is not so practical. It goes a little bit into some details of how the string should be, and also if the hole where the titus goes through tears, then how do you fix it in a valid way? So if that happens, speak to a rabbi to figure it out, but we're going to jump straight to paragraph 7. So paragraph 7. You have your titsis, you either made them, you bought them in a store, and now you're ready to put them on. How do you put them on? So before putting on titsis, we're supposed to check the strings, make sure that they're not torn, that we have four on each side, that the knots are tied tightly. You're supposed to take your finger and separate and run them through the strings to separate them. They're not supposed to be intertangled with each other, the ends of the strings. And only afterwards do you make the blessing to put them on. If it would happen, I can't imagine this too common, but if it would happen that checking your titsis or your talus would cause a person to miss services with a minion, then it's better to make it to make the minion than to check your talus in the morning. Paragraph eight. We're now going to discuss the blessing for the talus gadol, the talus that we wear during morning services. In paragraph nine, we're going to discuss the blessing on the talus kata on the tzitzis that we wear under our shirt. So all blessings in general have a rule that we make the blessing right before we do the mitzvah or if it's a blessing on food, right before we eat the food. So you want to get totally ready to put on the talus before making the blessing. You don't want to put on the talus yet because then it's too late. We make the blessing before you put it on, but you want to be totally ready to put it on. So you open up the talus, you hold it behind you. Some people actually even pick it up and put it over their head a little bit already at this point, and you make the blessing that is found in the article sitter on page number four. Thank you, God who gave us the mitzvah of lihis atif batzitzis, of wrapping ourselves in tzitzis. At this point, we bring the top of the talus over our heads all the way, straight over our heads until it's covering our face, and the edge of it is by our mouths. Then we gather up all four corners, and we hold them together, the corners on the right in our right hand, the corners on the left in our left hand, and we take it and we throw all four corners over our left shoulder. The reason that we do this is because the Talmud says that we're supposed to wrap the talus around us the way that the Arabs wear their shawls. And Arabs usually have it covering their face exposed, but it's wrapped around their whole body, thrown over their shoulder. Therefore, there is an opinion that that's how you have to wear the talus, so just to make sure we cover all opinions, before we put on the talus regularly, we wrap it around our face, and we throw the all four corners over our left shoulder to cover our bases. We leave those four corners over our left shoulder for around 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and then we straighten out the talus. Sometimes you'll see people wrap up the whole talus going just around the neck, and all four corners are hanging around in front of them, on the, going down their chest 
in front. It's not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to have two corners behind us and two corners in front of us. So if it's bunched up and just going around their neck, we're not really doing the mitzvah properly. This isn't so common nowadays, but if someone's wearing, maybe with children, if someone's wearing a talus which is a bit too big and the back strings are dragging on the floor, then the Kitzvah Shechon recommends pick them up and tuck them into your belt on the side of you in order that they don't drag on the floor. It's not so appropriate to have your tzitzah strings, your talus strings dragging on the floor. Paragraph 9. There's a difference of opinions amongst the early rabbis whether we make a blessing on a talus or tzitzah at night. Therefore, if somebody is putting on tzitzah, or either the talus cut on the mini tzitzah that we're under our shirt, or the talus gadol, they're up early preparing for services, then you can't make a blessing until you reach a time period where it's light enough what the Talmud calls calls Mishayakir, when it's light enough to differentiate between the blue strings, if you have blue strings or what the blue strings would be, and the white strings on the talus. You could look at a Jewish calendar or a very, it's called a a Zmanim calendar, Jewish times, where you have these calendars of all the halachic times, and it would mention on there the earliest time that you can make a blessing on the talus. This usually ends up being approximately 40 to 50 minutes before sunrise. So if a person is getting up early, they're putting on their talus cut on their regular titus underneath their un- underneath their shirt. You don't make a blessing on it if it's too early. Once it's past this time of Mishiakir, then you should make a blessing. The blessing for the titus, the small mini talus that we wear under our shirt, is on page number two in the article Sitter. And it says simply, thank you God for this mitzvah of titus. Something that is important to note is that the Mishnah Bura says, and this is what we do, he says that if someone wears a talus for morning services, then you don't make a bracha on the tzitzis that you wear under your shirt. The bracha on the big talus also includes that, the, that tzitzis. So this rule about putting on your regular tzitzis too early if you wake up in the middle of the night would only be relevant for somebody who doesn't pray with a talus for morning services. For somebody that's not wearing a talus during morning services, then if they wear their tits at night, it also creates a question of whether they should make a blessing on their tits the next morning. And therefore, like the general rule we have with blessing, if you're not sure if you should make a blessing or not, we don't make the blessings. So they should not make a blessing on their tits in the morning. What they should do is they should find the friend who is putting on tits in the morning and ask the friend to say the bracha, the blessing on the tits out loud. And then he, this person says a main to that blessing and they could be included in it. Now this works very well in like a yeshiva dormitory where you're, your roommates are putting on tits also. But what do you do if you're at home? You don't have anybody else around putting on tits necessarily. And so then when in the morning, when you go to when you go to services in the morning, find somebody putting on a talus and ask them, can you make the, ble- the blessing on the talus out loud and have me in mind when you make that blessing? And then you say amen to it and you got that blessing as well. This concludes today's episode. Have a wonderful day and see you tomorrow.